Our scripture today is uh, from the book of Isaiah, chapter 2, verse 1 through 5. Uh, let's pray before we begin. Lord, we thank you for this reading, for this your word, which you're about to share with us out of your, your grace, out of your goodness. We pray that as we read your word, Lord, that our hearts are challenged, our, our lives are put at peace. We pray, Lord, also for your mercy to be upon the sermon, that it too may be used for your glory alone, that your light may shine through it somehow. We thank you, Lord, for all that you are, and that we can faithfully put our trust in, in, in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 1 to 5. Hear now God's word. This is what Isaiah, son of Amoz, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of the mountains. It will be exalted over the hills, and all nations will stream to it. Many peoples will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways so that we may walk in His paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between the nations and will settle disputes for many peoples. They will beat their swords into plowshares, their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war anymore. Come. Descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of, 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 of the uh, Lord. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I will explain this picture in a moment, just so you know that ship is not on fire. But we'll get to that in just a moment. <clears throat> Our scriptures today in the book of Isaiah is a prophecy uh, from God through Isaiah to the people of uh, Judah and, and uh, Jer- Jer- Jerusalem. Uh, in the beginning portions, in uh, chapter, or verse 2, I'm sorry, uh, in the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest mountain and be exalted by the hills and all the nations will stream to it. Uh, I've mentioned this before uh, a few times o- o- over the uh, years, that in ancient, ancient Israel and the culture of the day, that there's a great significance to mountains, uh, or put another way, to high places. Um, do you remember what that significance is? Anyone remember? What's that? That's right. The higher you are, the closer to God's realm you are. And so when the high places, that's where they would put the... Um, the, the temples and the, the idol worship, and not, not just God, but all gods, the people of that culture saw earth as human domain and sky as God's, the God's domain. And the higher that you go, the closer to God's domain you can be. And so that's why worship, you were in a place that was close to your God, whoever that might be. <clears throat> this scripture for um, Isaiah declares that in the last day, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as the highest of, 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 of the uh, mount, mount, mountains. Now you remember that the people of Israel lived in a polytheistic culture, a polytheistic world, meaning many gods. And so though they proclaimed one God, they lived amongst people that proclaimed other gods. And so in this scripture for Isaiah, they're showing that in the final days, God will reign above all else. All the hills. All the nations. The hills representing the high places, the other gods. That there will be only one God in in control. And that will be Israel's God, our God, as, as, as uh, we know God. Now, 
This is supposed to be an extremely happy vision, an excited vision. And of course, uh, many peoples will come and say, as Isaiah declares, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of God. He will teach us His ways so that we may walk His, His, His path. The law will go out from Zion. The word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God will, will judge between the nations, settle disputes for many people. They will beat their swords to plowshares, spears to pruning hooks. No nation will take up sword against nation. There will be no more training for, 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 for war. In other words, with God in control of all things, there will be peace. This, of course, is a great hope a great thing to look forward to in, in, in the uh, future. And for Isaiah, it will be God who, who will be at the center of, of, of this. Now, in our book of discipline, in the United Methodist Book of Discipline, there is a phrase that some of you are aware of, and that phrase is incompatible with Christian teaching. Have you heard that phrase before? Some of you may have, some of you may have not. Uh, with the the divisions that are happening within the United Methodist Church over uh, human sexuality and other issues, human sexuality though being the greatest presenting issue, uh, our current book of discipline uh, says and has said since 1972 that um, homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching. Now we all, most of us, have heard this language before. And, and uh, for right now, that's kind of the more famous line because we're talking about it all the time. However, there's another line in the Book of Discipline that says incompatible with Christian teaching. Now, I won't ask you if you know what is incompatible with Christian teaching according to our Book of Discipline um, because I didn't even know this. I just found out two weeks ago. Um, war. War is incompatible with Christian teaching according to our Book of Book, book of uh, dis, dis, discipline. And Isaiah dreams of a day where one day God will be in control and there will be no more war. There will be peace um, 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 among the uh, nations. Of course, we all can't wait for that day. And our Scripture ends with this. Come, descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of, of, of the uh, Lord. I've always loved light as one of the greatest representatives or illustrations of who God is. As I said in the uh, children's message today, that the idea of light and darkness has a, uh, a very interesting relationship to it. The thing is, is that darkness can't exist by itself. Meaning that you can't, in order to make a room darker, add more darkness. Do you have a bucket of darkness lying around that you can add to to make something more dark? A light, uh, I'm sorry, a room, a house, uh, a cave, for example. Darkness, at its core definition, is nothing more than the absence of life of light. In other words, if you want more darkness, you don't add more darkness, you take away light. If you want less darkness, you add light to it. As I told the, the, uh, the kids today, one of my favorite Pictures is, is one of these. I love the idea of the light in, in, in the uh, dark darkness. Went caving with some kids a, a while back, and uh, we, were, we were in pitch darkness. This wasn't Laurel Caverns, it was another place. And uh, one of the kids had a camera, and that camera had a red light on it. And we asked the kids to turn off all their lights, all their flashlights and everything, and just be immersed in the darkness for, for a bit. They did that, but this one red light was still on and shown in that cave. Now, we couldn't see too much by it, except we could see the light. 
We could see the direction of, of, of the light. We can see where the light was. And if we were careful, we could navigate towards that light. If someone walked in front of that light, we can see that there was an obstacle between us and that light because the light was taken away. There must be something in the way. And so we knew to go around it in order to find that light again. Uh, one of uh, uh, another illustration that is quite popular is um, those who have near-death ex- experiences. The light at at the end end, end of, of of the uh, tunnel. You ever hear of that? People going towards that light, and then uh, something takes them away, and then they you know they live again. But they always talk about this light at at the 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 end of, of the tunnel. The, love, the thing that I love about this is that this, for me, is hope other than wishing. You see, when you wish, you want something to happen in, in, in the future. I wish that the bad things would go away. I wish that I was three inches taller. I wish that my car would do zero to sixty in one second. I don't wish that. It's extremely dangerous. We have all these different wishes. But like most wishes, they are things that don't change who we are. I could wish in the midst of, of, of the uh, dark, dark darkness that the light would turn on. I could wish that the monsters would go away, but the picture I have is me as a little child cowering in the corner in the midst of of the darkness, wishing that things would change. Hope, however, to me, is different. Hope is that light, though distant. Hope is that promise that the monsters will go away, the promise that the, the valley of darkness has a way out, and the light allows me to walk. To move. Though still surrounded by dark, I have a place to focus. The people in Israel had a mountain that they could see. A place of peace, a place of light, a place of promise, and a place of hope. A place that they were excited to get to and, and call to everyone, let's go up to, 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 to the uh, mount, mount, mountain of uh, God. I love this. Illustration of light as a symbol of uh, God, and one of the one of the more beautiful examples is the lighthouse. You all seen pictures of lighthouses standing on a cliff in the midst of a storm, and you can see that beam of light cutting through the muck and the mire and the wind and the rain, giving light and guidance for the ships that might be out there. And if your ship that's out there being tossed by the, the, uh, the, the storm and the waves and you don't know where you're going and you don't know where it's safe and you don't know where, where, where it's uh, dan- 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 dangerous, all of a sudden you see this lighthouse. You have a place in the darkness that gives hope. Interesting thing about most lighthouses... Um, are they pointing at safety or are they pointing at danger? Lighthouses point out danger. Lighthouses actually say, don't come this way. The shore is shallow, the rocks are huge, don't go here. But use us as a navigational device to go around. Use us to know how to get away. Lighthouse, though it points out danger where it is, it is in itself a symbol of safety. It's a haven. It's hope. I love the lighthouse. But there is one better. It's the story of Jesus. When Jesus was with his disciples, he... um, was in the, 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 the boat with them, and there was a great storm. You remember the story? And what was Jesus doing in, in, in the boat? 
he was sleeping. The storm was raging, the water was coming in, the boat was being tossed back and forth, and Jesus was sleeping. And the disciples were so afraid that they might drown and die, and they were indignant that Jesus had peace. Have you ever been tossed by, by life, anxious by the storm, and saw someone whom it didn't phase and was angry at them because they were happy? They were angry at Jesus because none of this stuff bothered him. So they woke him up and they said, aren't you afraid? Obviously he wasn't. How could you be sleeping at a time like this? We're all going to die. And Jesus looked at the storm and the waves and the wind and Jesus said what? Peace be still. And everything was calm. It's nice when you look to the shore and you have a light to show you the uh, way. But what's better is in the midst of the storm that you have a light on deck with you. You have a light that pushes the storm out away, showing the way to to go, sometimes one step at a time. The beautiful thing about Christmas is just that. God's no longer on a mountain high above all things. Through Jesus Christ, God is with us walking with us in our boat, in our car, in our life. Not a light in the distance that we need to walk towards, but a light by our side, keeping the darkness at, at, at bay. It doesn't mean we'll never dwell in darkness. We make mistakes. We take wrong turns. Sometimes sometimes we get in front of Christ and the light's behind us and we are blocking it. But yet, Christ is still there. Showing us the way. Helping to live and guide us through Christ's love. This last scripture, come descendants of Jacob, let us walk in the light of, of, of the uh, Lord. Through Jesus Christ, the light of the Lord, walks with us. And that is one of the great things that we're celebrating this at at Advent season. That's one of the great things that we are sharing with one another as we go into this Christmas season. So please, let me uh, close with this final Scripture. Now the God of hope may fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And amen. Go in peace.